Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we are finally going to be talking about Dr. Phil. I didn't let Dr. Oz get away with his shady activities so therefore I can't really excuse the beloved Dr. Phil either. Even though he may be memeable, that doesn't mean he necessarily deserves this beloved TV doctor status that he has. And I found quite a few interesting things in his past that might need to get brought up to the light. So let's dive right into today's topic and see just why Dr. Phil may be a little bit more problematic than what you think. Let's get into it. So Dr. Phil, or Phil McGraw, was born in Venita, Oklahoma in 1950. He moved to Kansas, attended high school there, earned a football scholarship and a PhD in clinical psychology at the University of Texas. His dissertation called Rheumatoid Arthritis, a Psychological Intervention is still available online. According to Dr. Phil in his younger years, he was homeless and had an alcoholic father. So I do wanna give him credit for these accomplishments at least because growing up in that type of environment can be extremely difficult. Despite the struggles in his childhood, Dr. Phil was determined to make something of himself and went to college for many years in a difficult field. So hey, you gotta give credit where credit is due. In his earlier years before he was famous, Dr. Phil is also credited with founding Pathways, a lifestyle movement in 1985. The archives on the Pathways website says he, Dr. Phil, founded Pathways in 1985 in Wichita Falls, Texas, where he was a professional psychologist in private practice with his dad, Dr. Joe McGraw. According to Phil, he developed Pathways because he knew there had to be a better and quicker way for people to knock down the barriers preventing them from being successful in all areas of their life. And he was right. Since he opened Pathways doors, the classes have filled by word of mouth for over 20 years and have changed the lives of thousands and thousands of people nationally and internationally. Although no longer involved in Pathways, Dr. McGraw works with Pathways in a consulting fashion in order to ensure Pathways stays true to his original training model. He personally conducted the Pathways weekend walk in March 2001 during the Get Real Challenge, which aired on the Oprah show in the fall. A few years after founding Pathways, Dr. Phil also founded CSI or Courtroom Sciences Inc. with lawyer Gary Dobbs. His courtroom experiences inspired the TV show Bull years later and CSI has done incredibly well for itself. However, it was around this time that issues began to arise. The Dallas Observer wrote about one extremely worrying scenario I hadn't really heard of before. In 1989, he felt he had a decision to make, continue in the gossipy small town that he had outgrown and the psychology practice he did not love or move to Dallas and pursue his passion as a jury selection expert. McGraw says that decision was in no way influenced by a ruling of the Texas State Board of Examiner of Psychologists, which slapped him on the wrist on January 27, 1989 for engaging in unprofessional conduct. The board found that McGraw had maintained an inappropriate dual relationship with a young woman because they had an ongoing therapeutic relationship followed too closely by a business relationship in the form of part-time temporary employment. McGraw says he won't discuss details of the case because of doctor-patient confidentiality, but considers it little more than a misdemeanor, an employment error that he has put behind him. The woman who now lives in Dallas and wishes to remain anonymous says she has not been able to do the same. In 1984, she was a college student returning home after her sophomore year depressed, lonely, and suicidal. I was emotionally abused as a child, she says, and suffered from low self-esteem. When McGraw began treating her, she says, he became fully involved in her life, demanding to know with whom she spoke, when she went to bed at night, what did she do that day? If I was depressed or anxious, his first question was, why didn't you call me? Every time I felt bad, he insisted only he could fix me. When she wanted to spend the following summer working for a professor at the Houston University she was attending, he persuaded her to work in his biofeedback lab in Wichita Falls. He kept me totally dependent on him, she says. A year after her formal complaint, the psychology board publicly reprimanded him and resolved to supervise his practice for a year. But before the year was up, McGraw started CSI and moved. So, I mean, it doesn't look very good to say the least. This came up again years later in 2002 and Dr. Phil denied it completely. He said he didn't sexually abuse her and in the New York Post, Dr. Phil is quoted saying, it was fully investigated and dismissed. Well, what is it? Dismissed or reprimanded? 
I'm not saying Dr. Phil sexually abused this patient, but make no mistake, he took advantage of their relationship as a psychologist. This wasn't dismissed, the case was closed. Those have two very different meanings. Let alone the fact that she was only 19 and Dr. Phil was in his 30s at the time. And I'm not saying that the relationship was sexual. The woman herself didn't claim that, but a relationship doesn't have to be sexual in order to be abusive. He would have known better than most how she suffered from low self-esteem, her mindset, and her struggles. She went to him seeking help and he invaded her privacy to worrying levels. I get why some people say it was ages ago, let it go, he didn't know any better. Like, no, Dr. Phil wasn't some teenager that made a distasteful joke on Twitter. He was in his 30s, older than I am now, harassing a teenage patient. Plus, keep in mind, we're still in the history section here. The point is, even though Dr. Phil may consider this one mistake, this was a long-standing inappropriate relationship and that's how it was viewed. And the way he minimizes this is kind of worrying, but it's a trait we'll definitely see again later. Now, in the early 2000s, Dr. Phil caught his big break when Courtroom Sciences was hired to work on a libel case involving mad cow disease and the Texas beef industry. The defendant was Oprah Winfrey, and McGraw's job was to prepare Winfrey for whatever the cattleman's lawyers threw at her. And Oprah won the case. At her victory on the Oprah show, The Day of the Verdict, she presented McGraw to her viewers for the very first time. It was Phil who gave myself back to me, she said. A few months later, she had him as a guest on her show. And from there, he found his fame. After some appearances, building up a decent reputation for himself, Dr. Phil launched, well, Dr. Phil, the famous TV show we know today. In 2005, he was making $15 million a year, even when the show was barely three years old. We all know how TV works, and I'm not going to say how absolutely insanely high that salary is or fault him for that. If he's bringing that much money into the station, then good on him. Though Dr. Phil tried to launch spinoff shows like Moochers, similar to ABC's Kicked Out, or Dr. Phil House, similar to CBS's Big Brother, none of them would have the success that Dr. Phil's original daytime show has. One extension called The Doctors has done all right and even won an Emmy, but today I'm mostly focused on the titan that is Dr. Phil and his main show here. Now, it wasn't long that Dr. Phil began to face some controversy. In the early 2000s, Dr. Phil had two pretty notable issues, ones that I can't overlook or dismiss as a small growing pain on his rise to fame. For those of you who watched my Amway video, you might remember this one. On his show, Dr. Phil has promoted weight loss quite a bit, and there's nothing wrong with being an advocate for health. However, he promoted Shape Up products. News Hit staff wrote about it a while back and said that though this wasn't normally a topic they'd cover, it hit them close to home. Sure, there was a class action lawsuit and a multi-million dollar settlement involving Dr. Phil's Shape Up diet products, but we usually keep our focus on issues closer to home. As it turns out, however, this little noticed item has a significant Michigan connection with Amway. You know, the multi-level marketers of soap and hope that was formerly headed by gubernatorial candidate Dick DeVos and co-founded by his father, playing a key role in the whole shady deal. The Shape Up diet supplements Dr. Phil helped promote and peddle, his chrome domed visage was featured on the packages, were pushed with the claim that the products contain scientifically researched levels of ingredients that can help you change your behavior to take control of your weight. The suit against Dr. Phil and the company that actually sold the products, CSA Nutraceuticals of Irving, Texas, alleged fraud and claimed that there was no credible scientific evidence that these products had any effect on a person's behavior. New accounts of the $10.5 million settlement didn't mention Amway, the controversial company co-founded by the candidate's father in 1958, or the umbrella company Altacor, which Dick created in 2000 when he was running the show there in Ada. Coverage of the class action lawsuit filed in Los Angeles focused mostly on the role played by the bombastic Dr. Phil, who has denied any wrongdoing connected to his promotion of a now discontinued line of dietary supplements. People could apparently choose which formula would work best for them from pear or apple based on their body shape. And the labels said they contain scientifically researched levels of ingredients that can help you change your behavior to take control of your weight. It's all bullshit, nonsense, insanely frustrating. And even the FTC had to step in and basically tell Dr. Phil to stop fucking marketing these things. There's so many things wrong with this, but let me explain the two biggest issues I have. The first one is how little research Dr. Phil and his team actually did. 
like, yes, I have a small team of people behind me on my channel helping me, but I'm a thousand percent sure Dr. Phil has more people behind his multi-million dollar TV show. And the fact that they didn't catch this, that no one thought like, gee, maybe like, let's not involve ourselves with a pyramid scheme. I don't know. It's just very, very frustrating. Now, the second giant issue that I have is the fact that this was very early on in his career. Dr. Pill was peddling products that don't work with no scientific backing behind them. It shows not only how quickly he sells out, but how little he actually cares for his viewers. You know, the people who continually watch him and continue to make him rich. I know some people may be really fond of Dr. Phil and his common sense advice is something plenty of people need, I'm sure but there's no excuse for him promoting a health and wellness product that he had no evidence for that worked. Like, come on, Dr. Phil, I thought you'd be at least a little better than Dr. Oz. Now, I obviously have my own issues with the supplement industry in general, and that's an entirely different video all on its own. But the fact that this was 10 and a half million dollars, that's what the lawsuit was. It just shows how far Dr. Phil's reach went. People believe him, they've seen him as trustworthy, and even in these early days, it just shows how he was willing to take advantage of that, and it really rubs me the wrong way. Now, the second event of the early 2000s is one that falls into more of a gray area. A biography by Sofia Dembling and Lisa Gutierrez was released, and these aren't just some random women trying to trash him. Sofia is a veteran journalist and former reporter for the Dallas Morning News, and Lisa Gutierrez obtained the first exclusive interview with Dr. Phil's first wife. Her reporting on Dr. Phil has appeared in newspapers around the world, and she too is an award-winning journalist. So if anyone was about to dismiss them as hate, Readers, you're gonna have a tough time doing so because these are quite legitimate journalists speaking out against him and the book was anything but flattering. It alleges that Dr. Phil used unethical business practices, abused his first wife, and even abused his staff. Online and on his show, Dr. Phil has presented himself as a loving husband who adores his current wife, Robin. The first time I saw her, she had on baggy shorts and a t-shirt. Looked like a million bucks to me, Dr. Phil says with a smile. Though they've been together for decades, since 1976, Dr. Phil married his first wife, Debbie, when he was pretty young, in 1970, and their marriage was annulled in 1973. Now, some sources say the marriage lasted four years, not three, but the point is that it was a pretty short marriage, according to Debbie Higgins McCall. It's for a very good reason, too. In marriage, he was not the kind, sensitive boyfriend he'd been in high school, she claims. He did not allow her to get involved in the business. Her domain was at home. He wanted her to always look nice, which included lifting weights to bulk up her chest, she said. McGraw, who has been married to his second wife since 1976, has admitted that as a young man, his entrepreneurial efforts in everything from health clubs to motivational seminars often came at the expense of his second family. He and his wife, Robin, have two grown sons. He and McCall had no children together. Under his domineering personality, McCall said she felt like a tightly coiled spring that finally popped back to life. The marriage ended when friends and neighbors questioned his commitment to the marriage. When I confronted him about his infidelities, he didn't deny these girls and just told me it had nothing to do with his feelings towards me to grow up and that's the way it was in the world. McCall said, I understand that in any relationship, there are two sides to the story, she said. In my relationship with Phil, I have kept my side quiet for all these years because I couldn't see any good coming from sharing it. Now, let me say this loud and clear. This is alleged. I have absolutely no idea what went on behind closed doors here. And frankly, I don't know if I want to. I think it's a bit weird when people become extremely personally invested in celebrities' personal lives and take sides in a relationship like this because we don't know these people in real life. I've got no idea if Dr. Phil was controlling and scummy in the 70s. Some tabloids even speculate Dr. Phil is abusive to Robin now, leading to courtroom battles and frustration from those on the Dr. Phil team who say that these are reckless lies. The only reason I mention these allegations of emotional abuse is because of the source and the pattern here. Dr. Phil had allegedly been controlling a 19-year-old patient of his. Enough evidence was there to get him disciplined from the psychology board. Then these two journalists published that he had been controlling his first wife and had been unethical in his business. And this wasn't a tabloid publishing this. This wasn't some cheap magazine or some clickbait article. This was an entire book with interviews. So whether or not what they published is true, I find it worth mentioning at the very least. 
And it's time to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. I just recently got my newest HelloFresh box and I had firecracker meatballs in it, which sounds kind of crazy. And it's listed as spicy on the menu, but it was actually just really flavorful, which is something I appreciate. A lot of times food can just be lacking in flavor. And these were actually really good. And they came with roasted carrots and sesame rice. And it came with this big laminated like recipe card. So it's like, I couldn't even mess up the directions. And I, trust me, I, I tried. Everything is pre-portioned to exactly what you need to easily follow the instructions on the big laminated sheet. It was like literally cooking for beginners, which is what I need. And the result was actually really tasty and fast too, which is kind of nice. And HelloFresh offers 23 recipes each week with a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. So you'll never get bored. And they even have healthy options for low-cal, carb-smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian as well. So if you want to get started, go to hellofresh.com slash casket. 10 and use code casket10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, if you want to get started with some easy, healthy meals delivered right to your door, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash casket10 and use my code casket10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. And now back to the video. Now, aside from his past and promoting supplements, there's also been criticism of Dr. Phil for how he handles guests. A couple years ago, one young woman, Treasure, appeared on his show saying how she hates African-Americans despite being African-American herself. Clips of this went viral because, hey, we all love to hate on stupid people and this is one of the few times on the internet we can really unite and come together when there's someone so obviously and plainly wrong. And as we've seen from the reality TV show episode, we don't even know if this is true. And honestly, after doing my research for that episode, I I don't know. I, I'm even wondering if this is just made up for TV. Like it just feels so bizarre that it can't be true, right? And I can't understate how much Treasure claimed to hate her own race. She called other African-Americans monkeys, said they belonged in zoos and far worse things too that I honestly, like, I don't think I really feel comfortable repeating. However, there's been debate if Treasure should have even been given a platform. Not because of her polarizing views, but because of the exact thing that I worried about, because it's fake. Nina Richards, Treasure's sister, spoke up against the show. In an exclusive with Essence, Nina is now speaking out against the lies her family purported on Dr. Phil's show and how Treasure and her mother only appeared on the show for the free trip and to become a meme. I knew they were going to LA, but I didn't know what it was about, Nina said, when asked if she knew about their Dr. Phil appearance. They told us they weren't allowed to say what the show was about. I thought it was something she actually did in her real life. When it comes to Treasure's appearance on Dr. Phil, it definitely wasn't something the 16 year old orchestrated on her own. Nina says her mother wanted the free trip and her brother was basically along for the ride. But what pisses Nina off even more is that her deceased father's name and reputation was ruined. William Richards, who was a white man, died in 2006 and had his photos shown on national television. Monique, Treasure's mom, apparently lied about the fact that Treasure never knew he wasn't her biological father. According to Nina, her siblings always knew he wasn't their biological father, but he was the one who raised them. They disgraced my dad, who I love dearly. I haven't spoken to my mom since the episode aired. My mom and I have had a relationship very rocky because she's done a lot of evil stuff. And what else is fake according to Nina? The fact that Treasure hates anything that has to do with black people. If you take a look at Treasure's Facebook page, you can clearly see she has black friends and even wrote about supporting Black Lives Matter. And guess who else might have known about Treasure and her family being a fraud? An unnamed producer of Dr. Phil's show who left a comment on a now deleted Facebook post. It's a disgrace to our family and our race. Dr. Phil's people did not care. They wanted to spin this narrative. My mom raised me to be a proud black woman and the love of black culture was always there. Nina says more on the topic that Treasure knew her father, she was aware of his race, which was also lied about on the show, and how she believes the show's producers themselves are racist for promoting this narrative when it was so obviously fake. And if Nina's telling the truth, then what the fuck is wrong with Dr. Phil's people? 
They commented on a Facebook post, they didn't look into the story, yet they put something so incredibly hurtful on air. The reason is obvious, ratings, and the fact that they allowed fabricated, fake, cruel remarks to have a platform is despicable. This earns a giant yikes on trikes from me. Nina's story sounds far more believable than Treasure's anyway, and considering Dr. Phil's past with this, it doesn't look too good. As for what I mean by his past, well, Dr. Phil's had plenty of people take issue with the way he handles guests. One lawsuit alleged that in an interview, Dr. Phil manipulated an interview with the Calpos, a pair of brothers last seen with Natalie Holloway, a missing woman. Natalie is still missing to this day, and she has been since May 2005. She was last seen alive with the Calpos and a Dutch teen, Jordan Vandersloot, in a gray Honda early on the morning of May 30th, 2005. The brothers and Vandersloot have all been arrested in connection with her murder, the Calpos on two different occasions and later released, but none have been brought to trial. This isn't the only lawsuit involving Natalie Holloway's disappearance, however. Her parents have reportedly sued Oxygen Media for making a mockery of the case, as well as the Calpos themselves for causing harm to their daughter in their negligence. Other sources say this second lawsuit wasn't filed or didn't exist, but you get the picture. The point here is that this tragic event, this missing young woman, became an absolute mess once it hit the media. Although the case against Dr. Phil was eventually dismissed, I wouldn't be surprised if they twisted a few facts around to make it seem more interesting. According to Deepak Kalpo, he says he never slept with Holloway, yet the show presents it in a way that looks like he admitted to doing so. And once again, this is all alleged, but if it's true, then it would be extremely worrying for Dr. Phil's show to purposely present evidence in a missing person's case that's incorrect or unproven. Nor is this the only time the show's been accused of deceitful editing either. In October, 2008, an article from Linda Deutsch read, the memorabilia dealer who led OJ Simpson to a hotel room where an infamous robbery occurred filed a lawsuit Tuesday against the Dr. Phil show, claiming his remarks in an interview were spliced to change their meaning. Thomas Riccio, who testified at Simpson's recent kidnapping robbery trial, sued Philip McGraw, known on the show as Dr. Phil, and Stage 29 Media for unspecified damages. The lawsuit claims defamation, fraud, emotional distress, and being portrayed in a false light. Riccio said that on the show, he was referred to as the shady deal maker, a puppet master who would sell his soul for a coin, and the ringleader of this crime. He said that during the show, McGraw falsely claimed that Riccio set OJ Simpson up and told people to bring guns into the room. Riccio said his denial of those statements and his claim that he is anti-gun were edited out and replaced with a shot of him nodding his head as if in agreement with the host. Had plaintiff been aware of defendant's intent and their intended actions, he would not have agreed to do the interview, the lawsuit stated. The October 6th interview aired October 8th. Simpson was convicted of 12 charges in a Las Vegas court October 3rd. Teresa Corleano, a spokeswoman for Dr. Phil, would not comment. Although again, this ended with the judge backing Dr. Phil, I think it's important to remember that Dr. Phil is as much reality TV as it is supposedly like a taped therapy session. Just because it's not keeping up with the Kardashians or something doesn't mean that what's shown on television isn't heavily edited and makes someone look like a villain and someone else the victim. And Dr. Phil, the rational one who just happens to be caught in the middle every single time. Obviously, there's probably a few exceptions, and no, I can't fault Dr. Phil entirely for this because it's not like he's the one editing the footage, but as he's pointed out to most of the problematic or dramatic of guests, it's his show, it's his name on the walls, and he's the star. The show doesn't exist without him, so if he saw these lawsuits coming in or was aware of any deceptive editing, then he should at least take some responsibility here. However, as much as I would like to continue, that's where I'm going to end today's video and part one of the Dr. Phil series. There is a part two coming soon on Friday, and I know plenty of what we've said today hasn't been confirmed, but we're about to get into some really hefty accusations in part two, so be on the lookout for that. Part one was kind of like the whole nice dipping our toes into the water thing, but part two is gonna be the tough one. So yeah, there's your heads up. So with that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. And if you want more content from me, you can check out my sources and all my social media, like links for everything are down below. Thank you so much for making it to today's video. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.